Hello everyone. In this video, I'll explain the self-hosted agent for Azure Pipeline and then show step-by-step -step implementation of it in the lab. So let's start with what is Azure Pipeline agent? So all the pipelines rely on the agents to configure the environment as well as the resources so that the build and the deployment workflows can be run. So there are two types of agent. One is Microsoft hosted agent and another one is self hosted agent. In the Microsoft hosted agent, all the infrastructure is taken care by Microsoft itself, where the underlying virtual machine or the Docker or the tools or the packages installed on that Docker or the virtual machine are taken care by the Microsoft. So what we have to do is just run the pipeline using Microsoft hosted agent and everything will be done in the backend by Microsoft. However, there are certain limitations here. If you are a free user, you can't run parallel jobs. And if your job has to run for hours, then there is a time limitation on the Microsoft hosted agent, which is 60 minutes by default, but you can increase it to five hours. However, after five hours, if your job is running, it will be failed. So to overcome this, we can create an agent pool where we can use the self hosted agent. In this case, we create a virtual machine in our environment, then install all the tools which we require and then install the DevOps pipeline agent to that virtual machine and configure it to integrate with our project. So by using the self hosted agent, we can run multiple jobs together. That means in parallel and there is no time limitation. So if your job has to run for hours, so you don't have to worry about it. There are other benefits also in case you want to run a pipeline based on the third party tools which are not available in Microsoft hosted agent. In that case, you have to run the self hosted agent because you can install those tools into the virtual machine. The only negative of using the self hosted agent is that you have to manage the virtual machine and update all the tools and the packages which you are using for your pipeline. So now let me show the step by step implementation of self hosted agent in the lab. I am now logged into Azure DevOps portal and I am in the project demo DevOps. Now I'll start with the creation of agent pool. Go to the project settings and in the pipelines agent pool. So right now it's the default agent pool is Azure pipeline, which is run on the agent, which is hosted by the Microsoft. So let's go back to agent pool, add a new pool and it will be self hosted and the name of the pool will be new pool grant access permissions to all the pipelines and create. Now the new pool is created. Right now there are no agents. Let's click on new agent and it provides the information that whether it's a windows, Mac OS or Linux, you need to download the agent, then configure it. In this case, I'll create a Windows virtual machine and then install this tool. Let's go to Azure portal and create a virtual machine. Go to the virtual machines, create a new virtual machine, create a new resource group, RG DevOps agent. Let's name the virtual machine as DevOps 01 and 2022 server. Let's provide the username and password. And I need to RDP to the server. So I'll be assigning the public IP to the server. Networking, use the existing virtual network and create a new IP. Next, next, disable the boot diagnostics. Otherwise it will create a storage account for me. I don't want that because once this lab is done, I'll delete this virtual machine and create. 
I'll pause this video and we'll be back once this virtual machine is created. It took few minutes to create the virtual machine. Let's go to the virtual machine now. Copy the public IP address and RDP to it. Perfect, I can log into this virtual machine. And I'll open a small window. The reason is because I have to copy the details from the Azure DevOps. Timing, let's go to Azure DevOps portal and copy this link. We need to download the agent. Let's open PowerShell. Now PowerShell is open. And it's downloading the package now. I'll pause the video and we'll be back once it's downloaded. Agent is downloaded now. Let's check. And here it is. It was around 225 MB. And it took around few minutes to download. Let's go back to Azure DevOps portal. And the next command is to create the agent and CD into the agent directory. I have already created the agent directory. So I'll just go in it. And right now there is nothing in it. Now let's copy the next command, which will extract this file. But instead of extracting it to downloads, let's extract it here. It's extracting the file now. Unless. And now we have option to run the commands. And now we can configure it using the config CMD. Now let's run this. And now it will ask for the details to configure it for Azure pipelines. Enter server URL. So the server URL is, if we'll go to the organization. So this is the URL of the server. Let's put it here. If you want to use the personal access token, yes. Let me create a new one. If we'll go to the user settings, personal access token. New token, DevOps agent, full access and create. Copy this, go back, provide personal access token. Now, which pool are we integrating it to? So we have already created a pool with the name new pool, I believe. Let me cross check, go to the project, project settings agent pool and the pool name is new pool go back to our server new pool and the agent name will be devops one which is the name of the server yes let's use the default one and the work directory will be underscore work which is default let's use default because we want this agent to be running always. So let's run it as a service. So let's change it to Y. Let's run it unrestricted. And it will run under anti-authority network service. Okay, enter. Whether you want to prevent service starting immediately after. So we are not preventing anything. And it's done. Now this service should be running automatically. But let's check. Let's go to our DevOps agent. Refresh the screen and it's showing as offline. So that means the service is not running. Let's go back. Open the services, services.msc. Now look for Azure Pipeline Agent, which is Azure Pipeline Agent here, as you can see. And it's not running right now. So if we'll run it, start. It fails with an error because it's not allowed to run on the local computer. 
the service was using the anti service and this server needs to be part of the network but it's not so let's go to the properties log on local system okay and then run the service and now the service will start it's running now let's go back to azure devops portal and you can see the agent is online let's test whether this agent is working fine or not so now let's create a pipeline and we'll define this agent pool so that pipeline will run on this agent pool itself so go to the pipeline create pipeline source as the azure git repository first pipeline so it has created a sample starter pipeline where the trigger is none and the pool is test pool so our pool name is new pool and we don't want to use any variables and trigger is none so that means if there is any change in the repository this pipeline will not trigger and it's just echoing so let's see if this works or not save and run and run now if we'll go to our project settings and agent pool and in the new pool you can see that there is one pipeline running and it's running on this agent otherwise it would it otherwise it should be showing in the azure pipelines so if we'll go back new pool you can click here go to the job it's successful it just ran eco test which is test and it's successful so this pipeline was a very basic pipeline it's just to show how to run your pipeline using the agent pool now you can run parallel jobs or run the jobs for a longer time and because you have access to this virtual machine where the agent is running you can install different packages and tools which are specifically third party which are not supported in microsoft hosted agent so that's all for this video i hope you liked it please like and subscribe thank you so much